Hey friends, it is Virginia again with Satsuma Diaries. I made myself a cup of tea and I wanted to say hello and check in about what it means to thrive as an empath. I have been making videos on being an empath lately because I think a lot of challenges that come up as um, we're practicing opening our intuition and maybe we're practicing intuitives, I think a lot of the challenges that come up um, in this life and in this path can boil down to the fact that we're highly sensitive people. And once we can really integrate that deeply and know like that this is a specific personality type and it comes with gifts and it comes with blessings, but it also comes with curses. No, it comes with, <laughs> it comes with challenges. It comes with liabilities. That's real. And it's really good to, you know, there's so many personality models out there and personality tests that you can take, but there's not one really that like, that says, Hey, you're a psychic and you'll have these challenges. So we should talk more about this. Um, so I made a blog post this week about it. Um, I hope you'll check that out. I'll link it below. But I think the main takeaway, um, I want to keep it kind of short today, but the main takeaway is that um, if you're kind of swimming around on the internet and you're looking at like intuition development videos and videos about consciousness and videos about spirit guides like this channel puts up, um, you were probably a highly sensitive person already. You were probably born that way or you've done a lot of work on yourself to open yourself and kind of deepen your intuitive gifts. And so what that means is you have to really kind of integrate that this is the path you've chosen or this is the path you're on. And what that means is that the folks that are in past highly sensitive people, um, they, you know, are effortlessly experiencing oneness. It's a really beautiful thing. It's a really special thing. Um, everybody is open to different degrees in this life. Everybody has their own gifts. Like some people might be pros in business. Some people might be pros in sports. Some people might be pros in politics and diplomacy and all this kind of stuff. Maybe they're like, maybe they're, you know, really great at family, family life and um, gathering the community. But if you're an empath and you're an intuitive, if you're a highly sensitive person, your gift is being open, being receptive, being highly sensitive, okay? Which is a beautiful thing. And what we're doing for the world and for the collective, the human family, is that we're, we're kind of pointing the way home. We're, we're showing the human family like where we came from, which is in the higher realms, in the heavenly and nirvanic realms, um, consciousness is this open and is this permeable and we are in a state of oneness really easily and really automatically and so we're kind of like anchoring that frequency here for the material plane for the human family and that is our gift um, but it does come along with some challenges and some of the biggest things that come up are because you're so sensitive it's easy to get into uh, you know, it's easy for you to sense the people around you and the, the spaces around you, the energy around you, because everybody is energy, everything is energy. Um, and what that can do is it can kind of knock you off center. And so empaths can really struggle with getting lost in the collective, getting lost in the, um, the emotional bodies around them, in the energy um, environments around them. And so many of us go throughout life being chronically lost or off center and not knowing that we're swimming in the um, outside of our emotional locus, um, our personal emotional body and our personal field. We're just in the collective field automatically. So that's kind of cool, but it's also kind of messed up <laughs> because what that means is you're likely getting lost in in you're, you're likely getting on the roller coaster with people when they're in suffering and when they're in um when they're in chaos when they're you know experiencing pain it'll be really easy to get on the roller coaster with people and go through all that drama because you're feeling their experience so deeply um so what you have to do to balance that is really get clear on what's yours and what's theirs and let other people experience their own pain and you don't feel like you owe them um, getting on the roller coaster just because you can, just because you're that sensitive, 
it, that's not necessarily your job to get on the roller coaster with everybody who is in suffering. Um, so that's one thing to be mindful of. Um, it, it's really easy to get lost in the collective. So what you need to do every day, make, make space for this is like journaling or whatever your process is to check in with yourself. Like, what am I feeling today? What's my opinion on this? Um, how do I feel about this? Like, what am I feeling right now? Like, use a feelings wheel, like I've said before. These will ground and center you into your own personal um, frequency and your own personal vibration. It'll also help you know your own energy. So you need to get out of the collective a little bit, like maybe get some alone time and some solitude so you can feel your own energy. You need to do this every day. Um, it wasn't until I developed a practice of meditating in the evenings every night without fail, which was a, actually um, kind of made me a little bit of a hermit for a year or so. I didn't realize that um, until that year that I was chronically um, extroverted <laughs> and I was like chronically like in the collective and I had not really anchored deeply into my personal sense of self. Um, so you gotta put some distance and use some boundaries between your experience and their experience. So what, what you need to do is you need to come home, you need to come back to your center at least once a day and deeply experience your core vibrational frequency so that you can hold that frequency when you're out in the crowd so you don't get lost in the collective. So that's important to, um, to consider. Um, and lastly, I'll just say that you want to make a real practice. You want to develop a daily practice of checking in with yourself, asking yourself what you feel today, what's your opinion on this, return back to your um, your column of beingness, your sense of self. It takes a lifetime to really honor the self as an empath because we come in as like holders of the collective. We're like, our, our automatic experience is the collective one. So we have to work in the other direction and honor the self. That's, that's where we're working on ourselves is loving ourselves, right? So if we don't get on the roller coaster with like Mike, who's in a bad way today, that's an act of self-love because we are protecting our own emotional equilibrium by not going there whenever we're not needed, when we're not called. Um, so that's an act of self-love, right? Getting into that sense of self and asking yourself, how do you feel? And like, what's your perspective on this? And like doing what you love, you know, that's your that's your spiritual home, by the way. What brings you the most bliss and the most joy is your spiritual home. That's where you feel the self the most deeply. Um, that All of that is like how you practice self-love. And so as an empath, that's really your job. That's one of your most important jobs is learning how to honor the self as much as you can honor the other. Um, because the other, honoring the other and loving the other comes so naturally to us as healers. So that is what I wanted to share today. Um, thanks so much for listening. Um, if you like this kind of video, please like and subscribe and check out my other videos in my impact series. And um, if you can, Check out my blog post that I posted recently on Thriving as an Impact. Be well, guys. I'll talk to you soon.